who lived forever. Ever since the dawn of humanity, people have strived to live forever. Every achievement, medicine, lifestyle, and health propels us closer and closer to immortality. While we can extend our life, they will, be, they will never be able to help us reach immortality, the ultimate dream. But good computers. Imagine a world where you leave your biological body, something that is susceptible to pain, disease, and injury, and go into a computer which will never feel pain, will never be injured, and will never be attacked by the tyranny. This is the belief in digital immortality or singularity. This is great. Who wouldn't want to live forever? But before this can become reality, there are many hurdles we have to overcome. One of which, and arguably the biggest, is storage. Where do you store all of this? Ray Kurzweil said in his book, Singularity is near. A computer would have to have 125 petabytes of memory to achieve digital mortality. This is a number with 15 zeros in it. It's huge, and it also possesses a huge challenge for us if we want to achieve digital immortality. But I believe, my idea is, that we take a technology that has never been associated with this, that is not as much known, but has the potential to reach this number easily. That other technology is DNA digital storage. What is DNA digital storage? It's a storage solution like any other, hard drive, SSD. But unlike those, it doesn't store its memory on magnetic tapes or disks, but surprisingly, on DNA. Now, how is this done? It's done by synthesizing, creating DNA strands in such a way that nucleotides in building blocks are arranged in a certain order. Now, why does this matter? It matters because these nucleotides can be given numbers, and they were given numbers. Guanine and guanine were given one, adenine and syndosin were given zero. And what this did was convert a seemingly random pattern of nucleotides into a defined binary system. And now all it needed to be a storage device was find a way where you could keep it safe, that can be done virtually anywhere, cells, salts, and a way to read it. This is currently done by DNA sequence. Um, more on that later. Now, in 1988, when this first began, they were only able to store 35 bits, which is not great. But since Harvard says they can store 700 terabytes in one gram, and Microsoft did one better. They say they can store a billion terabytes in one gram. If this number, what they're claiming they can do, actually happens, if they can actually store a billion terabytes in one gram, we would have the ability to store all of Facebook's data since it began, all the posts, comments, and likes, all of that on the tip of your finger. This is a dream come true. Being able to store all of the world's data in less than one kilogram of DNA is the ultimate future. But how close are we to this ultimate future? We can't store one billion terabytes yet. But we can store 15,000 terabytes, which in comparison to a billion isn't that great. But if you take 15,000 terabytes, around the same amount of storage as 30,000 personal computers have, it's huge. Now, this is all good, but there's one very big open question, the question of cost. Creating or synthesizing DNA isn't as expensive, but what is, is the way we read it, DNA sequencing. It's not cheap. In 2001, when the Human Genome Project was going on, it cost you around $100 million to sequence one genome. That's around 750 megabytes of data. 
If that number was fixed, this technology would never be considered for anything. But that number didn't stick. And in 2015, you could achieve the same thing as you did in 2001, but for $1,000. This is, as you can see, this is a huge decrease. It's a 99.9999% decrease. And if this trend, this decrease continues, by 2030, it'll cost less than a dollar. Now, this all combines the enormous amounts of data can store already, and the potential to be become cheap, so maybe if we replace the sequencing for something, or it gets very cheap, it will give us a technology that can solve that original problem, that problem of storage for digital immortality. And this would mean we would be ever closer to the ultimate goal, the goal of immortality. Now, I want to leave you with this. If this actually happens, if DNA digital storage will be the solution for the storage problem for digital mortality, it would be a striking irony. DNA, something that is used in a biological body for something completely different, will create a future where neither it or that biological body is needed. Thank you.